feel like busting loose, feel like busting loose. Yeah. Hi, Evelyn. Hi, Jasper. <laughs> Welcome back. It's not so nice to see you again. Very nice. I found you on the street yet again. Ah, ta-ta. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco, in the Tenderloin. Yes, it is. One time I was in a rest home and my family left me. And as I entered the restaurant, a ball of flame came behind the glass doors. And I said, no socks, no service. And my birthday was the next day, so I went back to the rest home and my family pulled in and we went for a waterfall walk. So I saw a girl in a bikini and I think it was my brother-in-law or maybe even you that's me as you're looking towards me said, nice tan, and a bear climbed in the water and took a towel and strangled the goat by putting it on its horns. So I said, hidey ho, and my family wouldn't let me back in the car because I had used the word ho. And my brother yells out the window, she's not a prostitute. And the way he said it and the way I took it were 200 years apart. So my mom takes a roll of toilet paper and sticks it out the window, and it rolls around the antenna. And they have a 10-pound block of cheese on the hood of the car. And as they're going down the road, sure enough, the front end of the car is lifted, and they ram into a motor home which my sister had rented to towel off in. Evelyn, can I ask you a question? Yes. T tell me about the great loves of your life. Oh, travel. No, I mean, I mean like the... Can. Maybe the people in your life, the men. Fresh the, fruit. <laughs> what about the men? Have you been in love before? No, I never have. Never? No, I never have. You were married? I've been active. You were married? Yeah, I was married to Shakespeare for seven years. And how was that? He wears leather. His voice went out. Evelyn, what are, what are you proudest of in your life? Finishing college. Good for you. Yeah. Where'd you go to school? Manhattan, Princeton for piano, Yale for running, Hunter for science, and I saw Einstein. And I was reading a book, and it took me a long time to get a brain that would stay captive. I was in love with Indian lore. That's all I had. I had been a young girl, and I was very uh, petite in the muscle area that gets stretched. So I didn't know it, but they signed me up for Olympic training. And I came out, and a child pushed me from behind. And I took his head, and I didn't know I was so strong that my mother was born in 1940, and he started crying. And I said, I'm not gonna do, and he said, do something. So I got my, my finger out, and I threw a ball, and it hit a boy in the eye. And a teacher came over and said, we're going to make a torture sh chamber for you, little girl. You apologize. I said, I repent, and I went to the front of the school. I said, torture. So I was on a river walk. He just had Monopoly money. 
and he wanted me and he said, why am I queer today? And a bus went behind him and it stopped and it didn't, it didn't um, honk its horn. And I said, um, why don't we go get a square fruitcake? And he said, oh, you mean that sugarless gum? And I bend over and he disappears behind the gate and boards the bus and waves to me from the window. It's pulled down about an inch. I go, bye-bye, baby. He goes, you're too skinny for sugarless gum. I thought that was pretty good for Monopoly money on the river block. You're too skinny for sugarless gum. He knew his way. Turned out to be a fire department plug. Uh, uh, one of the fire department had ripped his eyelid on a tree coming down to the Cadillac market. I left them an inkjet printer, but we didn't have any toner. So I turned myself in for um, child abuse because I had left a baby in a, a safety section on death row. This was when land was very small. We just had uh, a walk through a concrete block. It was freezing cold. There was even rain dripping from the ceiling, people lying to the side cuts on their eyebrows, their, their fingers and whole arm displayed on concrete. One arm was stepped on and he yelped and closed his eyes. And I bent over to uh, waken him and to soothe him and bring him a, a block of reality. And they cuffed me and used their nightsticks. They even put it up the sleeve of my slack. So when they did that, I didn't object, and immediately I was on the Sand Hill Day platform seeing the train come in. And I bent over to look at it, and the conductor grabbed me by the back of the collar. And he said, why don't you go get some matches? And I went around thinking that I was in the subway, and I wound up in front of Burger King. And a man was taking hit after hit off a pipe, striking match after match. I said, that makes 16. And the cops walked up behind me. I said, you aren't a cop until you've seen this man making food disorientation. And they went in and they said, this place doesn't have a food license. And they closed them that night. And I said, well, um, I prefer not to starve to death if you could walked me over to the fire department and it took us five hours and 14 minutes. And I said, um, I'm gonna sit down here. And the concrete was soaking wet and they co came over to me and they were naked except for underpants. I said, why don't we go down to the park? And we did. And they pulled out a beauty kit. They filed my nails told me why it wasn't necessary to flush the toilet, that the wells were 35 feet deep, and that they were National Geographic photographers, that they had seen me in Alaska dipping my hands into acid to save a raincoat. My sister had slept too late. She had opened an ammonia tank with a key, and she denied it, but when I threw it, orange into a box to make a boyfriend for myself. The NBA coach walked up behind me and he said, um, the doc's ready with Popeye fish. And he fell in and his chin was hanging from the dock. And I said, I'll marry you if you show me my two fingers. And I almost fell in, but I was trembling from behind. I said, Evelyn, when he gets up, you can walk to any job site you want. And I did, I got a job that day in an Alaskan bar called uh, Pete's, Pete's Whistle Stop Cafe. And I met Sally Rand, she circled the earth with monkeys. She landed in the Florida Keys. And I also met Chet Eisenhower, hydroplane driver. He drives on water. And uh, Bonnie Lake and Bonnie Riot were also in the bar. And they walked me through a concrete uh, block of, not tenements, you know, where the army, uh, the barracks. They walked me through the barracks of 1939 when Hitler 
surrendered to the Japanese and, and Paris, and he didn't speak French. And when he stopped talking, Russia did what Russia was made. They only speak to people who look 17. It doesn't matter if you tell them their age, they'll just go, huh? You go back to work. So, uh, Evelyn, what were your, your high school years like? What kind of teenager were you? I was a smelly cat. People said I had body odor. I was very nervous. I wanted to be a cook very bad. But I just had a halter top. It was real cute. My first day of high school, my sister had been nearly killed being thrown out of a car. But I learned three days later that she didn't know the word road. But I spread the word that day. I said, we've got to be careful about these cars. And everybody says, oh, yeah, we can't go to high school. So we all got the giggles, and we ran out, and we became cheerleaders that day in short uniforms. I was the only one dressed in black. They said, Evelyn, get up and show us what you can do. And I said, oh, I'm not tan enough. They said, oh. You know what? Eddie Merck is riding up to the mountains today. And I ran home. I said, I've got to be all alone so I can write what I want to be when I turn into an Olympian. And my dad says, uh, remember when we had pizza? He says, I've got another big one for you. And my brother walked in <coughs> with a Christmas tree and he said, I just bought a house. <coughs> Is the potato salad ready? And he said, I'm so glad you're home, Evelyn. And he handed me a money order and he said, um, Dad bought a golf set with his um, NRC money. I said, the nuclear rat, I said, the FDA warns you that this is a jurisdiction. And he left the house screaming and crying and he said, God, she's a cop. I thought she was a U.S. Marine and he sticks his tongue out the window. And my mom comes over, and she had a rifle. And I said, uh, man, that's her leg. That's what I learned in the Marines, that your hips, if you keep going like this, eventually you'll make a gun because your, your legs will collect fat and you'll keep talking or the window will bust. And so he drove out in his VW and he, came back four hours later, he said, Evelyn, I want to marry you. I'm going to do it or give me that money order back. So I got in the back seat of the Volkswagen and I was really decided that I had to live as a waitress. And I said, Jim, can you drive me up the road and drop me off? And I checked out a video, and there was a woman lying like this, and I was attracted to the dress. And I brought the videotape home, and it was of a girl walking behind a scene. And suddenly the, the tape turned into the USS Missouri with people dancing on it. And so now I was in the Cadillac Hotel, or the... Um, uh, the Sunnyside Hotel, it's a, it's a boys' youth home. It turned into that when they finally got the manager to stop giving away bribes. He would tell people to go get coffee for him. He was uh, on the verge of near collapse from food poisoning because the pizza was the only thing that San Francisco had, not even a drink to follow it. So I didn't have any Brillo and I was pushing and pushing my pipe. So this morning I was woken up with a thrush. That's a fight that you don't win to me, a thrush. You're not liking people. You don't want to wake up. And I heard a voice say, go ahead and get up. They're going to belt you in. And sure enough, Chan took the belt off. I had stuck it under a disco dance garage. Somebody had looped a belt around my neck trying to murder me. I never found out who they were. But I had come down from a hotel with a cup of coffee 
he had asked me not to take it. And as I went out the door with the coffee cup, sure enough, somebody, bam, a leather belt around my neck, and they hooked it too when they closed the door. They, there was no screen on there. So as my first check, it was just $6. I got uh, the whole six dollars. They didn't know to remunerate the bank and the couriers. You know, these banks will be stocked with young people eating vegetable pie and and uh, nibbling on old day old pizza. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite childhood memory? Oh, finding the side of that house open when I could peek through a house. Or seeing a minx cat full fur. That was the most fur I've ever descended. There was a man below the, the well. That well was 15 feet deep. He had been in there for five days. Somebody had mown a back lawn and built a house with lumber. This was back when there was free land. And I had stepped on a nail when I was young, so I was put on life support in, in Beth Israel Hospital. They had flown me by helicopter. This was the year before the Vietnam War ended. So I guess they wouldn't let communism go to go anywhere near even Americans. They feared the word. And I said, would you rather be a racist? And I started up my bike and I rode for 13 hours and I stopped on the railroad tracks. And sure enough, a train went by choo 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 and I walked through it. My mom was on the other side. So was my little sister. Her zipper had been zipped up to her chin. She had also been taken to a hospital, but she had been like that for seven hours, just cuddling her throat. And when they unzipped it, boy, did she cry. She was trembling. She's still a very shaky girl, but she doesn't talk much. She fears the human voice, but she's friends with Brooke Shields. I had met her on the bus. She had a Band-Aid on her knee, and we both got our, our photograph taken by uh, Richard Dreyfus. And a gang member, Julia Dreyfus, got off. She overeats of, of cream. So I met her as a waitress, and she put a plate down on a, on a... She's a waitress, too, a food server, but she is a glutton, whereas I am a old fart with gassy legs. But anyway, my hamstrings are short so I can stretch and jump. And I said, five inches will get you a mile. And sure enough, she kicks the king in the hip. I said, he is the king for getting through your abusive mother syndrome. I said, you don't have to be a mother. She said, I used to grow pot, but they busted me in the old folks home. I said, Evelyn, that's so funny. And they served me a uh, a watermelon juice and the, I guess his hip was against the bar stool because when he sat up there was a hamburger and a fried mushroom and that was all my dinner for seven days. And as I dated Carlos, Carlos, my father-in-law, his son is a welder up in Portland. He also grows wheat and Mary picks cotton. She was with me. It was just the two of us. And uh, Rhett Butler in Savannah, Georgia. Evelyn? Yeah. Who's your favorite Beatle? Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, because he does photography. He's married to Linda. She doesn't have her last name. She's famous, too, in, in music circles. She's very light-skinned, so you can't see her unless you're, you know, sensitive. But security guards, she, she likes to read, too. She also paints in oils. She was born in a Matisse painting. I was at the Gutenberg Museum my first afternoon in New York, knowing I had to college, and I was yelling down the street. I said, that isn't your voice. And I said, may I join you? And I crossed the street, and a girl punched me in the face and broke my jaw. And so I said, uh, what should I do? And I said, Evelyn, you're a Marine. You, you've got information rolling through your arms. I said, you need some seeds. So I found a pomegranate and I ate half of it and I felt just fine and it was sparkling. And I met a uh, endorphin, that's somebody with a, 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 um, 
you're in a big city with a big career in endorphin. Anyway, he was a clown, and so he tried to teach me to juggle. And I spent five days on the Chappaquiddick Hall. The land was very small. It was about two inches long. That was the first land when I ate that pomegranate. Before that, people had to walk on water, sit in beds. And uh, so anyway, this man had been underground for five days. And when I got up, I saw his rib cage. He was naked, didn't have any sperm count. And so I stuck my finger up his bulb and, and that became the king's abusive mother. So she's a queer. I watch her, I, I find her a friend, I tell you, as the king is out of your thought. But, uh, you know, he is sensitive being slapped in the head six times, but, you know, she was underground for five days. So he may never know that, being as she did hit him five times in, in the stool channel. Red, red wine, stay close to me this time. I don't want to be on the line. I'm busting my head. I got the blues. Red, red wine, you make me feel so fine. Red, red wine, you make me feel so fine. I'm on the vine all of the time. You got the blues. I love it when you sing. Thank you. Yeah, I did major in theater. That's why I moved to New York. My father's from Rochester. The Hudson River descends into that town. I walked there on a um, field walk to get my license to teach. And sure enough, as I did that, I was in the Dulles Airport. It was just uh, four feet long. And I ran and I ran and I busted my breath on a door. And I stood there. I said, stop trembling, this mall has got to be made. And I went like this. I remember Kennewick in Canada. Sure enough, there was a mall. And I went shopping there with the $10 the king had given me for sharing my watermelon juice with him. He still doesn't eat meat. He drinks beer, fresh water. Yeah, he's the only black man I know who likes water. And Barbara Ann. He coaxed me out of a half a pound of cocaine this morning. He sucks on it. A lot of people do chew cocaine. I smoke it on the pipe because I just have a, a, a because I, I just do not have a icy appearance. I don't like that. But I am from a cold climate. But I was invited to Hawaii because they need a receptionist for a bordello. They, I knew what sex was since the time I was two. I had my eyes wide open, but I just had a one and three quarter glance. But they gave me all the sugar I wanted. They, they were so lonely, and but we were rich in sugar because uh, that was when slave ships were rolling and gasoline was free. You could grab candy bars, and but my favorite was Jim Dandy to the rescue. My father bought Halloween candy with his. He signed up to be a judge. Before that, he was unemployed on the verge of hysterical breakdown. He slept in a high stack when he was seven years old and had to wander the land, landing up as a female with a dress on. He's, he, pre he preaches. One of his sons, and I guess you can call it his right-legged man, my brother Jerry, my mom's uh, brother had a son and she adopted him in court papers when my sister was married and came home from Reno. She went to school in Arizona along with Jim Bishop. Yeah, she's an accountant for the IRS. She does tax filing. Evelyn, are, are you good for today? You want to take a break? Yeah, sure. That was fun. Okay, thank you. I love hearing you sing. Thanks. Can we get back in the car now? Absolutely. Okay, thank Take you. you sure. You got the blues. Red, red wine, you make me feel so fine. I'm on the vine most all of the time.
<laughs> I love you singing. Thank you.